Hello YouTube, Esther781 here. Today on the table, in front of mine's Husqvarna 6021P. No start. Was was running fine from a little while ago and then uh, now it won't start. I'm suspecting water in the fuel or carburetor issues. It's actually the same owner as this guy, but I don't know which video is gonna make it up first. Um, I do know it runs. I sprayed a little uh, ether into it. And yes, it ran and sounded good. Um, air filter needs to be changed. Got that ordered. Uh, I'm gonna do a service to it as well. And uh, that includes changing the oil, which is full, and sharpening the blade. So let me get you set up. All right, so I don't know how much we're actually gonna be able to see, but I've gone through my shop and found my cleanest dirty tray <coughs> no but we should be able to see if there's water which is mainly what I'm after yeah 10 millimeter bowl nut there, does, there is no shut off so I'm expecting there to be I'm expecting there to be more than that coming out It's plenty full. I wonder if that means uh, we have a float issue going on. Huh. Well, better keep going. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's some crud. Ooh, it's jelly. Don't know how well you guys can see all that. But that is, I mean, the bowl's not bad. The bowl's going to clean up fine. But I don't know when the last time he had this thing running was, but you'd be surprised. Sometimes they'll run with uh, jelly in them until they don't. That should be, I feel like that should be flowing a little. No, I guess that's good. Let me zoom you in. See all the chunkage? Yeah, and there's water in there. Those are those droplets you can see. So the tank has uh, got to be rinsed out, cleaned, and the carbs got to get gone through. So these are not the most fun carbs to uh, take apart because I believe once you take these off, Everything comes falling out, but I could be wrong. No. Well, we'll see. Oh, no, I'm rolling away. You guys still looking? Great. So there's a breather line right at the top here. And this should just pull right off. Yummy. I already blew this out once. Obviously, I didn't have the covers off, but... Uh, So this has got the auto choke, vacuum choke, yes. So I think I gotta get this cover off. Now that I said this, it's uh, not gonna happen, but I usually have great luck with this particular style of carburetor, um, cleaning them and getting them uh, to run again, no problem. But as I said, I already jinxed myself. Took the stud with her, which is also hold down for the coil. Off to a good start. Let me get a blowgun. All right, watch your eyes. Lever. Just 
one ten millimeter. Everything on this thing's ten mil, huh? Is it one or is it two? Ah, uh, you suck. It's two. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I, I can't remember if you can sneak these out. Somehow the clamp is right at the top. I don't know who could have even put it like that. This fuel hose is, look at that. It's had it. So I'm just gonna deal with that afterwards. Get that out of the way. Now what's left? Should just have, Yeah, I'm gonna pull that choke off. Guys, if you've ever done one of these and there is an easier way to uh, sneak this out, leave it in the comments or tell me the engine that I am thinking of because I, I know there's more than one like this. I remember there was a way to sneak it out. Not that this is hard. Okay, so that's out. What's left? Just this. There's just linkages. Linkages everywhere. Should be able to... I know I'm blocking you guys. All I'm doing is taking the uh, governor spring off. And then getting that throttle cable. Or, uh, I'm sorry, throttle linkage. And she's out. Let's get her over to the bench. Okay, <clears throat> sorry for the background noise. I got the uh, ultrasonic cleaner warming up. Fun fact, if you have an ultrasonic cleaner or if you use an ultrasonic cleaner, um, if you turn on the heat and just walk away, it'll take forever to, uh, to actually get up to temperature. But if you turn the heat on and then run a ultrasonic cycle, it heats up in no time flat. I think it must have something to do with uh, agitating the water. Some, something like that. But anyway, this thing is crusty. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just kind of sat overnight. And all the uh, crusties have sort of surfaced. Let's see the needle and seat. Uh, doesn't actually look that bad. There was a little bit of white stuff on it, but there's white stuff all over this carb. I'm trying to see the best way to take this off. I think there's a couple of torques. Anyway, so yeah, there's two torques right here and right there. And in hindsight, of course, I probably could have popped those off and then finagled this out but where's the fun in that huh also spoiler alert <clears throat> can you guys see that jet it is absolutely plugged solid so the odds of this carburetor coming back are starting to get slim and just a t20 torx that one and that one. So now this, I should just be able to sort of Z bar it out of there. Yes, okay. So that's out of that. And now, I was just gonna say, if I don't take it off, I'm gonna lose it. So that's how that one's supposed to sit. And we'll pop this vacuum hose off. It's probably, I'm just going to take this whole other bracket off too, because I don't know, sometimes the ultrasonic cleaner isn't too forgiving with plastics. And it's just two bolts anyhow, so. And then that linkage just hooks into there. Carb's getting smaller. Means we're on the right track. 
Next, I'm going to do the pilot jet. Two, three, four, five. You don't really need to count the uh, the turns on the throttle. The uh, sorry, idle screw. It uh, this doesn't it doesn't have an adjustable throttle, so it only runs full. We just get some of this crap out of the way. There's this little guy. Just a gentle little prize up. And then fling it across the bench. Oh, you're not even looking. Yeah, and I have new O-rings uh, for that anyway. And now, all that's left is trying our luck. Place your bets. I felt a crack. Let me just spray or blow it out. Put a little bit of oil in there. Who used the rest of my oil without telling me? Alright, so what I actually have is a nice flat head bit that fits nice and tight in there and a little tiny ratchet we're going to give it every chance we have but I'm sort of doubtful oh I was just about to strip it out I felt a little little cam out at the end and then pop Whew. all right survival odds are increasing Come on now. And I can see through it. So I guess that's a plus. All right. Is there anything else? Yeah. I want to pull bowl gasket off. Yeah. That's hard as a rock. So we'll have a new one of those. And this gasket, which I know I have a bunch of these as well. All right, we'll get her in the bath. Oh yeah, the emulsion tube, which is already coming out. This is what happens when you start rushing me, guys. Come on. Wow, this is gummy. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> See, I almost missed the money shot. All right, now we'll get her in the bath. So, still cooking, but uh, moving on to the rest of the mower. Uh, Got to sharpen the blade, and anytime I can get these um, adapters to come off, I will always... Put anti seize on them, clean the rust off with a wire brush. It just makes it so much nicer for the next guy who is probably going to be me. <laughs> um, all the oil's drained out of it and the gas is uh, drained out of it. And by the way, there's a hidden fuel filter on these that a lot of people don't know about. You just kind of pull it out. Ooh, can you see that? Catches all sorts of crap. You'd be chasing your tail for hours. I, I know I did the first time I uh, I found out about those. Some guys, <laughs> they'll just pull them out and put the line back on. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's added protection. It's what it's there for. So a lot of guys have asked in the past, what is that funky-looking red thing on the back of the door? And it is a blade balancer, but also a, uh, that's what that antenna is. It checks to see if your blade is bent. So you just kind of line it up, nice strong magnet on the back, and then you give it a, you know. So you pull this out until it's, you know, just about touching. It's just giving you a reference point. Spin the blade around, and you can see this blade has a 
a little bend in it. It's nothing that I'm gonna worry about. This is literally the mower he uses for the, you know, fine tuning on the edges and etc. So the other part of this is of course the balancer. This hasn't been sharpened yet, but you can see there's a lot more uh, meat on that side. So something to keep in mind. It's very cool. It's, uh, it's beautiful for riding mowers because if these are out of balance, it'll, it'll, you know, rattle the crap out of the deck and it'll start to wear out the spindles and whatnot. On push mowers, I mean, you're gonna feel the vibrations, but it's not really gonna do as much damage as it would there. I mean, if it's extreme, you know, balance it, but it's just not as particular. All right, so blades sharpened, oils changed. Next thing I wanna tackle, this is one of my pet peeves on riding mowers is when these knobs can't be tightened up anymore because of rust. Let me show you how easy this is to fix. So literally 30 seconds over on the wire wheel. All the rust cleaned up and now the secret is a washer. Put a washer on the outside of this when you go to reassemble it and put a little bit of grease on the threads. But look at that. Tight as a drum. Now on to the other side. And there you have it. It's the little things, guys. It makes me so happy. <laughs> That's obviously supposed to move down there, but this is just tight as a springboard. Ah, I love it. I tell you what, I never get tired of seeing how nice these carbs come out after the uh, ultrasonic. About 45 minutes, maybe an hour. A um, little bit of corrosion on the bowl, but it's smooth to the touch. And it's going to be fine. <clears throat> so, let's see. Emulsion tube cleaned up fine. Followed by main jet. Give that a quick little snug. You don't want to go crazy, guys. It's brass. Can strip it out just as easily tightening it as you can loosening it. New bowl gasket. Push that into place. I'm trying to get better about uh, keeping you guys looking at me while I'm working, especially with the carbs in my hand. Um, all right, pause. Now the needle and seat. It's just got this little tiny spring. You sort of compress and sneak it under. There, it holds itself. The spring ends up sitting on a little uh, recessed spot in there. Drop that in. Slide the pin through. Excellent. Make sure these gaskets don't roll on you. They want to. Uh, they're going to want to pop up out of that little ridge. You just keep an eye on that. <clears throat> it's going to make me work for it. All right, so that is in. Now I'm going to sort of quickly sandwich that. You can see the gaskets right there. You're over here. All right, new O-ring for the bowl nut. Again, just be careful that you don't roll it. And that's gonna be finger tight until I get her on the machine. And I'm gonna put some new O-rings on this bad boy. Making sure you guys are still watching. These can be a little finicky, especially if you have bigger hands. I like to start the first one and then walk that one down. Just nice and easy with a pick. It's not easy when you're trying to look through the camera and do it at the same time. I know, excuses, excuses. 
I promise I've done this before. Yeah, come on. All right, we're on the way. Now just slowly twist while you're pulling down. You gotta go all the way to the last hole. Ah, so close. Where are we in? All right, can you guys see that? Yeah. So the old ring goes in the last hole, and then the last one is obviously easier because you're just kind of throwing it on. So there, one there, one there. Little drop of lube. And that's just, again, some WD-40. It uh, makes assembly so much nicer. And then you just kind of pop that down. Bam. Nice snap. Okay, next. Idle screw, even though, like I said, this is not going to have low idle. But we'll set it to right where it was. Anyway, what's next? Uh, vacuum piece. Come on. I was here when it came apart. Get my up. Oh, I'm upside down. There we go. So we'll drop that in. And those two, they have a shoulder to them, these bolts. So you got to make sure they're lined up or else it'll pinch on you. Like that. That's why I'm starting them by hand. So no, uh, no oopsies. See what I mean right there? You just kind of pop it over. Perfect. Now, for disassembly, I'll use the gun, but for reassembly, I always tighten these up by hand because these are so easy to strip out. And I'm not talking about the head of the bolt. I'm talking about the aluminum housing. <clears throat> Pop that line back on. A little clamp, which was angled down. Now, the exhaust piece that we could have left on. And that was hooked on here, right? Yeah. Straight up. And through. Come on, I know one of yours was watching. I think we're all, yeah, we're ultimately trying to get it there. So I gotta go up, through, and twist. Like that, kinda, sorta. Come on. You try doing this with a thousand people watching. That's right, I said it. We just broke 1,000 subscribers. And guys, I am I'm beyond grateful and i'm just i'm thrilled i i can't thank you guys enough putting up with watching me and then subscribing so it means you liked it <laughs> or you just like watching me fumble on the camera and mess up all right stay stay Have you guys even been watching or am I just like going way off the screen here? Excellent. That is one 
fully rebuilt and reassembled carb. Let's throw her back on the machine. All right, hook that back in. I still need to tighten down this uh, thermostatic exhaust choke. And hook up the breather. And there's three 10 millimeters, two nuts, and one bolt. We'll just quickly go over those with a ratchet. Give them there five. Final snug. Okay, still waiting for the air filter. Um, engine cover is next. So, as far as this cover goes, I gotta zoom you out, hold on. So these covers, these three holes, they're gonna have these uh, little spacers. They sit in the holes very loosely. So if you just go ripping this off, one of these goes flying, this cover will squish all the way down. And uh, it's not a good time. So just make sure you got all three in place before you uh, slap that cover on. So we'll slap this on. Gas cap off. Come on. You know what's fighting me is those spacers. Because I gotta get them lined up on each one <coughs> before it drops down. And we got the pull cord, which is exactly what those spacers are for. And then we have the Don't Cut My Finger Off cover. And then three nuts. You guys get a nice view of my elbow there. All right, let's get some gas in it. See if she runs. All right, place your bets. One pull, two pulls, or absolutely nothing. Another successful revival. Um, air filter, it's not here yet. It's supposed to be in today. And then it didn't show up. So that is the last piece of the puzzle. And of course it needs a bath. And I think that's it for this one, guys. You, uh, you know what these look like when I clean them up. This is not in bad shape. Just needed a little bit of loving. Um, I want to thank you all again for liking, watching, commenting, and subscribing. We just hit a thousand, guys. Can't thank you enough. See you on the next one. Bye.